Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. I was your 2013 chair, and I'm filling in for my good friend Al Blinky, who couldn't be here today. He's your 2015 chair of the Board of Directors of your local Bay Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for coming out today and braving the elements. We certainly appreciate it. I know some of you are still eating, and I apologize for that, but if you'll take a moment and please, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please continue eating uh, for those of you who haven't finished. So we're on kind of a tight schedule today, so uh, I want to keep this going. Uh, once we get going, each speaker is allowed 10 minutes for general comments. And then the audience members, uh, if you have any questions out there, uh, we'll have staff roaming with a microphone that you can ask uh, your question to your respective speaker. Uh, as I look around the uh, room today, uh, I see a couple of uh, notable people who spent a lot of time and effort in their careers uh, on behalf of Bay County and Bay City. And one of them is a long, old-time friend of mine, going back to the 70s, after I got out of the service, who spent, who started his career as a state representative for our area for several terms, and then went on to be state senator for several more terms, and finally, finally wound up uh, his career as our congressman for this district. And uh, please welcome my good friend, Jim Barsha. Jim, please stand up. And another notable person in the crowd today, another fellow Irishman buddy of mine, our mayor, Mr. Chris Shannon. Chris, we you stand up? At this time, I'd like to bring up Mike Stonelak, who is the Senior Vice President of Independent Bank. He's also Vice Chair of the Board of Directors for Public Affairs for our local Bay Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, of course, this is called the State of the Community Luncheon, and I think I'd be a little remiss if um, I didn't mention um, this week we lost someone very important in our community, um, Alice Wirt, and in fact her service is today at 11 o'clock at Penzine. Um, Alice and Jack were very important to our community, uh, including her, her family, two sons, Steve and Doug, and her daughter, um, Helen Lee. So I'd like to, to take a moment and just bow our heads and say thanks for all that she's done for our community. Thank you. Um, now it's my privilege to um, introduce the, the three speakers. Uh, we're gonna do it one at a time, and if I could have them all come up um, and sit here, um, Rick Finn, the city manager for the city of Bay City. Um, Tom Hickner. Yep. <laughs> Tom Hickner, uh, executive for, for Bay County. <laughs> and Mike View, the superintendent of Pink County Area Schools. Now I think most of you have been here before and know the format. Pat talked about it. We're gonna, I'm gonna keep the bios short so hopefully we can give these speakers a little bit more than 10 minutes. Um, but they're here to update us on what's happening in, in their areas uh, in our community. And the first is Mr. Rick Finn. Rick's new to our community. Uh, he is the new city manager for the city of Bay City. He, he was born and raised in Tatawanda? Ta Ta Tatawanda, Ta just as I said it. <laughs> New York. Um, uh, he has recently uh, relocated to Bay City. Um, Rick is married uh, to his wife Melody for 38 years. Uh, his education, he's got a master's uh, degree in public administration from Northern Illinois University and a bachelor's of uh, political science and psychology from the University of New York State College. 
Rick's an active Rotarian and is involved in the Inter International City and County Management Association. Rick, welcome to the podium. Don't start the clock until we're going here. I mean, who's got the big bell that's gonna be sounded if I go over? Who's, all right, all right. So I think we've got that set, and let me just, okay. Where am I pointing to? Right there? Okay. For some reason, we're not working. I don't hold the timer now. Okay. Wait a second. Let me try that. Okay. I think we got it. Yep. Okay. All right. Officially start the time, please. <laughs> Thank you all for being here, for all the distinguished guests. I'm, there's too many to name, so I won't try, but also to all the distinguished business people, all the people that have made this chamber one of the best in the entire region and, and actually in the state and nation. I've been members, a member of many, many chambers, and I have to say that this is by far the, the best that I've ever been in. So congratulations to all of you for that. It's, it's an honor to be here, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you some things uh, that's, that's going on right now with, with the city. So let me start off by just talking about, I've been here almost a year, on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. I marched in the parade, a great time, froze, but anyways, <laughs> uh, looking forward to this year. But it's, so it's almost a year. And what we've been doing for the last uh, 11 months or so is putting together a process. And what I refer to, and these are my words, a transformation of our city government. We are at a point where we have, uh, last July 1st, the commission approved the first balanced budget in a number of years. And that is because obviously with the economy the way, the way it has been, and since the start of the uh, Great Recession, uh, revenues have continually plummeted and costs continually seem to try to go up and up and up. So to try to cover that, we were forced to do a tremendous amount of cutbacks. The city went from, at one time, years back, 450 employees to 300, 300 employees. So think about your organizations and how you'd be affected if you had that kind of decrease in your operations and how it affects your service level, so on and so forth. So the city did its best, it managed those things, but as most cities in the entire country, uh, it was a status quo. It was just survival mode. And that's what the city, this, our city, as well as many, many cities in the country, dealt with. Just enough to survive. Basically sitting down with the unions and negotiating, give back, so on and so forth. It was not the best time for city government. And it affected uh, our city government very directly. Basically, what we have is a tremendous amount of fiscal challenges that we were confronted with when we put the first balanced budget together. And we have done that, and we move on. We have endured a survival mode, and what I found when I came here was the employees were such that they were just simply trying to come to work, do their job, get paid, and move forward. Everything had been sort of stopped. The, the survival was, was the goal. There was no empowerment, there was no new things, there was no money to do new things. So it, it created that type of culture. And what we've attempted to do is we are looking at, let's see, what we're looking at is a new approach for city government. We undertook a process uh, when I first got here, working very closely with our elected officials, 
to identify specific, a specific new vision for the community. Breaking out of the shell, if you will, of the survival mode to take us up into the near future, the next five to ten years. And so what we've been working on, and the Commission has identified, is the various city goals that you see up in front. We have city image, we have customer service, we have fiscal strength, we have public safety, economic development, and new partnerships and networking. I could spend an hour on each one of those topics. Unfortunately, I don't have that availability of time. But I do want to talk a little bit about, first of all, the city image. We talk about the areas of the city where there is blight, uh, the houses aren't as nice looking or the apartments aren't as nice looking as we'd like to see them. The city image deals with those things. It deals with the conditions of the streets, the way our city looks, the way our public works uh, vehicles appear. Everything about the city that is identified or tagged as a city is part of this process. We're going to be looking at all these things over the next couple months, the next couple years, and moving towards making our city a type of city that we can all be proud of. So that's, in a nutshell, what the city image is. I want to spend a little time, though, talking about the customer service. We are spending a tremendous amount of time with customer service as our primary focal point. And what I mean by that is we are at the beginning stages of redefining the organizational culture in the city. Uh, we are looking at starting off with a customer service base model, and that's what we're looking at right now. We have spent a considerable amount of time uh, looking at how can we make our employees begin to change in the way that they actually provide everyday service to our residents, our businesses, so on and so forth. How can we focus on customer service as being the center point of our operations? And we go back and we think about why is city government, our local government, why does it exist? We exist for customer service. If we didn't provide service, there would be no reason for us to, to exist. We don't have product as many of you have. Our product is our service. And so we have begun a process of developing a customer service orientation that it's going to take about two to three years to, to fully implement. And what I mean by that is we're putting all the employees through <laughs> detailed training. All of our new employees will be going through an intensive orientation, all focused on customer service. It is going to be a benchmark of how we will operate in our city. And everything will flow from that customer service model. And again, that actually starts, just happened to be, tomorrow we begin the entire process with training programs, orientation, so on and so forth. So with, with that, we are at the beginning stages of what I'd like to think as a new approach to providing services to all of our residents and in, in business community. Everything else is going to flow from that. Everything that we do will ultimately be based on that commitment. Let me give an example of what I'm referring to. I'm not talking about customer service where you have a person come in and our employee is smiling and how are you and so on and so forth. That's basic customer service. I'm talking about customer service going beyond that. I'm talking, for example, about creating a system where, and, and I, I'm just thinking, the other day I, had, I was out at a local restaurant in the city and I uh, had a uh, retired resident come up to me and shook my hand. I didn't know the individual. And he said, I want to thank you, Mr. Finn. And I, I said, I'm always happy to, to take thank yous. And I said, well, what, what did I do or what did we do? And he said, well, he said, we were in a snowstorm the other day and I was at home and I had a doctor's appointment that afternoon at about four o'clock. And he said that I was totally plowed in, he was on a side street, and he called our uh, public works uh, operation and talked to somebody and explained his situation. And he said that he had to go to the doctors. If he couldn't get out, he would reschedule it, but he'd like to go. 
And he said, do you know that within 15 minutes, the city had two plows out in front of his house and they plowed him entirely out. And he was impressed by that. And so I, I hold that up as, as, a, as a model of the types of, of services. We wanna go above and beyond. We don't wanna just plow the streets. We wanna basically be there to help all of our residents and to really truly make a difference. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on. So we are committed to all of the goals and objectives that you saw up there. We're gonna be spending a lot of time, the commission, and I applaud them, they've provided the leadership. Uh, we are going to be operationalizing those. We just had a town hall meeting. We asked the public to come in and give us comments, which they did do. We are in the process of finalizing all those goals and objectives. We're operationalizing them. And if anybody wants to take a look at them, the goals are actually on the city website and the detailed operational plans and measurements are, will be on the website as soon as the commission adopts them in the next month or so. So we are moving forward and we are a very, very proud, we're very proud to be here and to be part of this great community. And I wanna thank all of you because uh, every one of you makes a difference in our community. And where's the bell? All right. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rick. Um, it's great to hear the focus on customer service because it doesn't uh, make a difference if you're a bank, uh, a hospital, construction company, or some other business. It's all about customer service, so it's nice to, to hear that. And, and you're right, you can see the progress. Uh, all the side streets uh, seem to be plowed, so big difference. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce a, a gentleman that I've had the pleasure to know for over 25 years, uh, Tom Hickner, our chief executive for Bay County. Um, you know, when I think of Tom, I, I you know, I can read you, you know, his seven pages of his, his bio, but um, he's got a tremendous breadth of experience um, and a tremendous passion for this region, uh, the county, uh, the region, the state. You know, when I, I think of Tom and, and all that he's been involved in, it reminds me of the, the great political leaders, Jim Barsa over here, uh, you know, Bob Traxler. And, that's what I see when I uh, when I uh, talk to Tom and think of Tom and and I can go over a lot on his bio, but I just uh, wanted to maybe walk through where he's been in his career and it all started. He started in 1973 as a congressional aide to Bob Traxler, and he did that for a few years and worked through a, a legislative legislative staff assistant uh, to Jerry Hart. Many probably remember Jerry. Uh, uh, Jer Jerome Hart was a great state senator that represented uh, Saginaw uh, in this area. Uh, then he's, he, he was a, fi a fiscal analyst and then he went into politics himself. In 1982, he was the state representative for the 101st uh, District of Bay County. He, went, he served that from 82 through 90. And then in 90, starting in 1992 through the present, uh, he's been the Bay County executive. He was, he's been elected six times, so that speaks volumes. Um, Tom has many awards, recognitions, but I think uh, one of the ones that stands out to me, he's been married 36 years to his lovely wife, Nancy. So it's my pleasure to introduce Tom Hickner. Well, don't start that clock yet. Um, I got to tell you a story that Jim Barsha shared with us at the, uh, at the table about uh, that bell and a previous speaker who I won't mention. Uh, a couple years ago, he didn't know that there was a bell, and he started to give his talk and just kept talking and talking, and the bell kept ringing and ringing. And uh, afterwards, he said to Jim, he said, that person out there was really rude. He kept banging that bell and standing up and doing that, and I could hardly uh, keep track of what I was supposed to say. And uh, so, anyways, now you can start the... Um, first of all, I want to say that uh, Rick Finn has been great to work with. Um, I have worked with uh, many city managers over the years, and uh, by far, um, 
Rick has been uh, just great to work with, and it's very important that we do work together uh, because of just the nature of what things are all about. I first of all want to uh, commend uh, Mike Seward, uh, the Chamber Board, uh, the staff of the Chamber, and all of you uh, for your efforts in helping to make this community a great place to live and work. Now, I think most of you know that uh, county government is a complex organization that will spend over $153 million in 2015 and employ over uh, 550 individuals. From our perspective, overall, we think residents are receiving value for their county tax dollars in over 40 important service areas that include road patrol, 911, recreation, enhancement of our environment, health programs for young children and families, services to our senior population, and a very good criminal justice system. Since 1993, our administration has worked to ensure that we have properly maintained county buildings and equipment that have been financed on a pay-as-you-go basis. Every county budget has been balanced with no increases in property tax rates. Our general fund reserves have grown from about $2 million in 1993 uh, to over $12 million today. And uh, that is a direct result of uh, the Board of Commissioners and my staff, uh, we all working together. Our pension system continues to be overfunded and uh, the Board of Commissioners and my administration is committed to ensure that we will continue to have balanced budgets. Now there were several key efforts uh, that were completed in 2014 and a number of uh, priorities that we have to work on in 2015 and beyond. Number one, 911. Uh, working with Midland and Tuscola County, we have purchased a new uh, software system that will significantly improve uh, communication between our 911 staff, uh, local public safety agencies, and uh, county residents. Uh, this uh, software system will be operational later this year. Our health department has entered into a partnership with the Saginaw Valley uh, State University's College of Health and Human Services for a university clinic at our health department, which will provide greater access to health services while providing learning opportunities uh, for Saginaw Valley students. And uh, an item that is in the news uh, these days, vaccinations, we are very proud uh, that our health department and, their st and the staff have uh, achieved um, working with the medical community um, vaccination rates that are in the top tier of all the counties in the state of Michigan. Uh, recreation, uh, we will continue to invest in Pinconic Park, uh, the Civic Arena, the golf course, and our community center to maintain and improve recreational opportunities for Bay County residents. In terms of uh, environmental affairs and community development, uh, yesterday the Board of Commissioners formally endorsed the Bay City State Recreational Area Lakefront Beach Access Study. Uh, the study is a consensus between the Department of Natural Resources uh, staff in Lansing and locally and local residents uh, for future investments at uh, the state park. This plan will lead to greater public access to our Saginaw Bay waterfront, including construction of a boardwalk, uh, additional beach restoration, uh, ongoing grooming, and ultimately uh, construction of a pier or a scenic outlook. In terms of services to the seniors, um, probably the biggest accomplishment that I can think of other than delivering hundreds of meals every day to homebound uh, seniors. Uh, in, back in 2011, we received a $385,000 grant uh, to address issues of uh, elder care. And uh, this was funded through the Office on Violence Against Women. Uh, the effort involved uh, law enforcement and uh, community human service organizations and is intended to support our older residents as they deal with uh, the issues that go on in the society. In terms of uh, human resources, um, we are very happy that uh, last year uh, we started a clinic for our employees. 
Uh, the purpose of the clinic was to, in the short run, uh, enhance the health and wellness of our employees and in the long run uh, produce some savings uh, in our health insurance costs. Uh, we know our clinic has improved the lives of many employees uh, and made the difference in at least three cases where the individuals did not know they had a life-threatening uh, condition and they're alive today because of, of, uh, of that uh, visit to the clinic. Um, we will continue to view our employees as essential to quality public services. Animal control is probably the number one phone call coming into uh, my offices. And um, we deal with a lot of issues. Uh, we will continue to focus on uh, good public safety services in animal control. And we intend to work with the Humane Society in increasing the number of adoptions of uh, the animals that we take into the um, kennel. Intergovernmental cooperations. Um, our community over the years has demonstrated in many instances of being able to work together, the cities, the townships, and the county. Probably the most significant event in the last, or project in the last 35 years uh, that has, was accomplished and is under construction is the water treatment plant, and Tom Page uh, is here, was uh, helped lead that effort. And it really was a joint effort between the City of Bay City, the Water and Sewer Department, the Road Commission, the City of Bay City, the townships, and the county, which uh, we uh, financed uh, the bonds, it was something like 60 some million. Uh, working with uh, Rick and uh, city and county staff, we have established a city county technology work group uh, that will focus on how we can share hardware, software, and other resources. And our focus in the near term is to develop uh, an enhanced a geographic information system. Uh, we're going to be doing a flyover uh, in the spring that will produce uh, photos within, I think, a foot or so uh, resolution. I, I don't know the terminology that well, but it's significant. And uh, we have, uh, under the leadership of uh, Franklin West Township Supervisor uh, Ron Campbell, uh, we are meeting the city, the townships, and the county officials uh, at least quarterly to talk about ways that we can work together and um, improve communication. In terms of economic growth, which is clearly the number one priority that we have to continually work on, um, we have got to make sure that we support Bay Future and the Great Lakes Bay Regional Alliance. And Mark Linton, the new CEO for Bay Future, is here. And why don't you stand up, Mark? And uh, Mark, I have every expectation every expectation that uh, Bay Future is going to really rise to the next level based on Mark's uh, experience. And uh, certainly the roadmap uh, to the future, which was a strategic uh, planning effort that was led by the Chamber of Commerce and the Foundation, is something that we all have to get involved in uh, working to implement. Now, essential to our success is a balanced economic development strategy that recognizes all of the key sectors of our local economy, agriculture, specialty manufacturing, uh, tourism, recreation, and retail trade. And each one of those segments uh, we, we need to work uh, to promote in cooperation with uh, not only all of us locally, but uh, within the region. And we must recognize that neighborhood redevelopment, as Rick mentioned, along with downtown um, investments is an essential aspect of uh, economic growth. Communication. We will continue to improve our transparency with the public by going ongoing investments in technology, our website, Facebook page, and Bay 3 TV, which is filming uh, this uh, today. Uh, we are producing uh, a monthly e-letter that uh, is sent out on what's going on in uh, county government, and if you're interested in getting a copy, uh, please do. Uh, let us know. Finally, uh, the importance of excellent local schools, colleges and universities, and ongoing improvements to our quality of life must be recognized. Many studies have demonstrated that superior local schools and a community's quality of life directly influence business decisions on location and expansion decisions. 
As a community, we must value education and continue to invest in civic projects. Uh, I am an op op very optimistic about our future, and I look forward to working with all of you as we address the opportunities that this community has before it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Our next speaker is Mike View, superintendent of Pinconning Area Schools. Um, Mike has spent most of his life in Bay, as a Bay County resident. Um, he earned, he graduated from Pinconning High School, attended Delta College, and then received his bachelor's and master's from CMU. Uh, Mike's been married to his wife Diane for 25 years. They have four children. He's a very, very active in his community. Um, he serves on the Michigan Associ Association of School Administrative Administrators Legislative Committee. He's a member of the Michigan School Business Officials and the Northern Bay and Arnack Rotary Club. Um, Mike also is part of the Pecaning Linwood uh, Chamber of Commerce and a, a Knight of Columbus. Uh, so, Mike, welcome to the podium. Before, before I turn this over to Mike, uh, I want to recognize, if you read in the paper uh, Sunday, uh, the Pink Hunting, uh Central, Central Element Elementary. At Elementary was ranked number one in all of Bay County schools. And, and for those of you that are familiar with Pink County schools, so a few years ago they passed a bond, rebuilt the school, and it's not always about the brick and mortar. It's, it, it, the brick and mortar is important, but it's what you're doing inside the school. And Mike, what you're doing inside is really working. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. I just want to comment that today's uh, PowerPoint that I have presentation is a group effort. Uh, the superintendents in the uh, county, we've worked together on this. So I want to thank them for their help. And I'd, I'd like to also thank Doug Newcomb for all his years of service and we'll miss his leadership. Uh, could we give him a, a round of applause? Okay, today I want to take you through the educational landscape. Uh, it's changing and I have quite a few talking points, but I do have time at the end. I try to sneak some extra time in for a video and the kids did it, so he, you know, you almost have to let me do it, but this, <laughs> the, the students did it, but it, it'll go past 10 minutes. So with that, I, uh, be, I will uh, move through these quite quickly, so please, um, I just want to kind of go over what I'm going to hit on are some of our district demographics, uh, current legislative topics, some of our collaboration pieces, uh, highlighting some of our districts and some of our challenges. Uh, I'll get through these demographics quite quickly, but you can see the numbers of the schools within the ISD and in, in Bay County, with Bay City being the largest and Pin County coming in at the, uh, we're the smallest district in Bay County. Uh, we do have charter public schools, parochial schools. Uh, I want to note that. Those are some of the demographics for those. And then Aranac County is in our ISD. I know they're not part of the Bay Area, but I did want to mention those because they do collaborate with us quite a bit on our projects. Um, one of the areas that you're going to find in public education, especially in the Bay, uh, Bay Region, is our student population has uh, decreased, especially in the Pinconning area. But if you look around the Bay Aranac population trend through the ISD, uh, that's just over 18,000 in uh, 910 down to around 16.5 and 14.15, um, so you're seeing a, quite a shift in, in the population. Uh, we do a lot of collaboration within the ISD and in Bay County. One of the main focuses we have is our curriculum council, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the curriculum changes that the state is, is uh, kind of legislatively changing. So we work together quite closely in those areas. We do a lot of collaboration with our technology and uh, various other services. Early childhood is another area. Uh, special education is a big, uh, we have itinerant staff in Pin County and throughout the ISD, they're great help in those areas. Adult education, a lot of high school completion is done at the Career Center. Again, a lot of our students take advantage of that. Uh, Mrs. Englehart out at the ISD does a great job with her programs. Uh, we also collaborate on fingerprinting, substitute placement. Mr. Guizdella does a great job with the transportation piece, and the school messenger is also one of the areas that we collaborate. <clears throat> one of the areas I mentioned earlier was changes to curriculum. 
Most of you have heard about the Common Core. Well, in, in Michigan and in Bay County, we are adopting the Common Core. And right now, they've got a new name for it. It's really called the Michigan Standards, but technically, it still is the Common Core, and they're modifying that, and the legislator is actually looking at ways that we can implement those things. Uh, all the districts in the ISD have done work in that area, and we are communicating that with our parents. Um, the Michigan Merit Curriculum was instituted in 2007. All of our, our uh, high schoolers were introduced to a new curriculum. All of the school districts in the area had to adjust and, and we conformed our curriculum to uh, the Michigan Merit. Well now, there have been some changes. Representative Joel Johnson's been instrumental in that. And in a nutshell, what it's done is loosened up some of those regulations, one of some of those classes and allowed us to use career and technical programs to do to fulfill some of those credits um, and that's helping some of our areas like skilled trades that are really starving for students who may not be that uh, four-year college student. And again these are just some of the requirements who can fulfill world language with uh, again some of the other CTE programs. And science has stayed relatively the same but again CTE is another option. Just a, a note that uh, Brad Billadu from uh, the Association of School Administrators, the legislation that we're facing, there's uh, over 650 bills were introduced in 1314 that education was impacted by. So as we work through these things, some of the areas that we've, uh, that we've had to conform to are looking at new legislation for early warning, uh, teacher evaluations that Michigan Merit fix. There's a new third grade reading uh, bill that addresses whether or not a, a student is reading at the third grade level, what we will do with them, accountability, cyberbullying, and then a lot of crisis things have come down the path. Um, Cyberbullying, we've all had uh, bullying. As you've probably heard in the news, a lot of bullying legislation. Well, now we are adding cyberbullying as part of our, our local policies. Uh, state letter grades. Schools in the past, just recently, we have went to a color-coded system. Well, now we're going back to a A through F system, so just that's on the horizon. For those of you who figured out the color-coding uh, mechanism, please tell me. <laughs> uh, early warning. Again, this is for uh, school districts who may be on a uh, low fund equity threshold. I, I've heard that the, the threshold might be below 5%. You'll, there'll be a lot of added uh, requirements that we have to report to the state. Uh, the MEET test is no longer with us. Those of you who have students or have taken the MEET test, it is now being replaced by the M-STEP, and then that is an online test that will be um, piloted this spring. Mr. Furman, my curriculum director, is looking forward to that. Um, it is online based, like I said, to replace the paper and pencil. And another assessment change. If in 2015-16, oh, we will be moving from the ACT for all of our juniors to the SAT. So that was just uh, recent legislation. Some district highlights. How am I doing for time? <laughs> Career Center, doing an outstanding job. They were recognized recently by the state engineering and drafting program uh, that was sponsored by Dow Chemical. Again, some talking points for the Career Center. Uh, over 82% of those students go directly to college. Um, last year, over 550 representatives from business and industry uh, helped out. And again, the STEM, the STEM focus you'll see later in my presentation is, is alive and well at the Career Center. Bangor Township Schools, some good things happening academically. ACT scores are on the rise. Uh, their safe system, uh, their cameras in their schools is very innovative, and I know Mr. Schmidt's excited about that. They're, uh, they're, they are a pocket of uh, increasing enrollment in our county. Uh, Bay City Public Schools is big into the STEM education. Uh, one thing I do want to note, they, you know, our schools give back to the community. If you'll note, Handy Middle School's 8th grade boys and girls basketball teams uh, raised money and gave over 2,000 items to the Women's Center. So that, again, is a great, great thing that our schools are doing. Dow Corning has come through with an additional $20,000 for Project Lead the Way. Uh, they've increased their Great Start Readiness programs, which is a preschool program, and uh, you'll notice throughout the county, our GSRP programs are on the rise thanks to, you know, the, Governor Schneider has made a commitment to uh, the preschool, and that has really been had a positive effect on our, our early educators. Uh, they've added GPS systems to all their schools, uh, school buses, in addition to cameras to enhance safety. 
That's what's Phil. Fine arts programs are uh, alive and well. Uh, they've had a lot of success with their reading programs. Again, the common theme of STEM, you'll notice that STEM is, they're in their second year of FIRST Robotics, and their community connections are very, very vibrant with the Hampton Little League and the Community Enrichment Boys and Girls Club and the Duke Pride Scholarship. One thing Mr. Cortez is, is, uh, is trying to promote is his bond and sinking fund that, that will be up for uh, the election is when? Six days. And you'll notice that it's a bond and a sinking fund to replace equipment, um, update technology, introduce wireless technology throughout his buildings. Bay Area Net Community High School. They purchased the former Hughes building in 2012 and they, are, they are, have grown into it. They're doing very well. But one of the um, unique things that they've done is they've, they've asked for a waiver for a four-day school week. And Aaron tells me that's going quite well. Uh, they have an online academy and they're, they're graduating about 25 to 30 graduates per school year. Uh, at Penn County, uh, one of the things that we did recently is we applied for a grant. Uh, we were fortunate enough to work with the Ch uh, Saginaw Chippewa Tribe. And when we thought of technology and how would we make it a, a sustainable push into our classrooms, well, we thought that the teachers needed those tools to begin with. And so we, all of our teachers, K-12, have either an iPad or a Chromebook. So we're doing some professional development in those areas. Uh, Mike mentioned the Bridge Magazine article that uh, ranked our district quite high. What they do is they take your academic scores and they also they use a factor of poverty and how much uh, that impacts, which we know has a detriment to the academic scores, and they factor that in and our district did quite well. We're promoting STEM activities and offering blended learning in many of our classes. These are some of the things that are going on in the area with STEM, FIRST Robotics, uh, the Dow STEM Ambassador Program, Dow Corning, uh, Corning has a chemical process fast start training. Uh, the STEM Explorer is something that I, I'm, I can't wait to see. That is going to be by Delta College, and it's a 38-foot STEM mobile, and it'll be featuring all kinds of different activities for STEM. And again, I don't want to go through each and every one of those, but Project Lead the Way is another uh, comprehensive middle and high school program, and I know Bay City has a quite a uh, exciting program in that area. And these are some of the shots. And areas of challenges. As a local school district superintendent, these are the things that I'm facing, and as, as you look around the county, they're no different. The budget reductions and restrictions that we face, uh, declining enrollment, changes in state accountability, Again, going from the color, trying to explain to our parents what does, you know, we used to be an orange, but now we're a C. Those are things that, that take a lot of tact and, and, and try, to, try to stay ahead of those types of things. Again, the declining enrollment. One of the things that we're really looking to do is increase our student and parent engagement, try to get the parents into the classroom so that they're a part of the mix. And some of the unfunded mandates that we encounter, such as some of the online courses that, that we pick up, um, that the districts have to pay for and some of the things like EpiPens that, that are mandates that we continue to see that we, that we have to fund. Not saying they're not good things, I'm just saying they're part of, the, part of how do we do business now in the education world. With that said, I believe I'm pretty much done. I do want to note the short video that I have is done by an eighth grader. She did get some help from her principal, but um, and this kind of highlights what's going on in not only Pin County, but it, it highlights what's going on in Bay County with Dow and, and some of the bigger players and, and what we're doing um, for the STEM, pushing students into the STEM areas, okay? Hi, I'm Christy Rose. I'm a math teacher at Pin County Area High School and we help prep our students for scientific type fields by offering college bound classes that um, prep them for fields like engineering and science related fields. Pink County High School, we're integrating the STEM curriculum using state of the art machinery that's being used in industry today, teaching the kids how to program machinery using computer controls and integrating math 
into that as we progress through into the more complicated cycles. Penn County Area Schools Woodshop Program is fortunate enough to have a state-of-the-art shop fully furnished with up-to-date cabinet making equipment, including the CNC laser engraver. The program uses a bit of a mix between CAD and graphic art software that then communicates with engraver. It can engrave on a variety of materials with open glass and has the ability to cut in certain materials. This is a robot. How it works is we get a kit from um, the company that runs all this called First. They'll give us a kit and then they'll give us a challenge for the year. Hello, Mr. Schmansky. I'm a middle school math teacher at Pink County and Area Schools, and I'm implementing a STEM based science class for sixth grade this year. And we are going to be doing some engineering and technology stuff with the Lego Mind Storm robots. Science is fun when you can get your hands on it. We tried to do some hands on science, uh, but this year, what I'm really happy about is we have this great classroom set of Chromebooks that has really opened up a lot of doors for all of our students. Hi, my name is Cassie Fainer. I'm a 2001 graduate from Penn County High School. I'm currently working at Dow Chemical in Midland. We're promoting science, technology, engineering, and math to elementary, middle, and high school students in the Great Lakes Bay region. Part of the thing that we're doing here, what we're doing at Dow, is to spread our love of science, technology, engineering, and math with the students and the schools in the Greater Bay region. Well, great update. Um, and it kind of makes that bowl that I made in wood shop that's set on my mother's shelf all these years a whole lot less important. Um, <laughs> Mike, uh, great update. Um, so we've heard from the city, the county, and the school districts, certainly the core areas for any community. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Mary Coolis, uh, she's the area manager for Consumers Energy. She's responsible for government, public affairs, uh, and the public affair activities in Bay Huron, Tuscola, and Sanilac County. That's a big area. Uh, Mary wouldn't let me read all that she does, but she did give me a couple I can I could put out there. She's the current president of the United Way in Tuscola County, and she serves on the Tuscola EDC, and those are some key areas in the small uh, thumb communities. Uh, Mary's going to lead the Q&A session, so Mary. Hi everybody. Um, good to see so many uh, people here today. Now is your chance to ask what's on your mind of our community leaders. Um, I, if you have questions, I would ask that you um, raise your hand. We do have chamber staff with microphones and, uh, you know, they could come to you and so that uh, everyone can hear your question that uh, you are asking. So if uh, people start thinking now, unless you already have some uh, ideas and questions at the top of your mind, but to kind of get the conversation rolling, um, I thought maybe, you know, I had a couple of questions that uh, I wanted to ask of our leaders. And I think the first one, Rick, um, will be to you. Uh, I'd like to compliment you, certainly, on 
your very um, transparent leadership approach and really a very customer-centric approach as well. Uh, certainly with the recent um, uh, measures that you've utilized, including the Fix It Bay City app and the new payment window that you're going to be installing for handling express payments, um, you know, very um, great measures to uh, respond to um, customer issues. And I'm wondering if you are actually uh, utilizing any kind of best practices or benchmarking against other communities and things that they have done and seeing success in. I guess the As, as far as the best practices go, uh, it's, it's just been a year and we're trying to get everything organized and, and set up. Uh, we do have plans to look at benchmarking. Uh, the International City Management uh, Association uh, does a lot in benchmarking where we actually compare how we do something compared to other municipalities, similar size, similar types of uh, makeup, so on and so forth. I've actually been in two communities where we use that approach and we use that to help uh, our efficiencies and also to make sure that we're doing things the best way we possibly can by making sure that we take advantage of being able to share, unlike the private sector, in the public sector we can share everything. And in most cases, everybody's very happy to show what we're doing this, we're doing that. And so with uh, ICMA and the benchmarking, we actually can improve our products. So we will be stepping in that direction, but right now we're, we've got to work to that point. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Again, I'd encourage you, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and uh, we have microphones that will be coming and getting delivered to you as soon as you raise your hand. <laughs> but as you're thinking about your question, I have another question. Uh, and I think I will direct this uh, actually both to Tom and to Rick. Uh, in Governor Snyder's proposed budget, it included revenue sharing, revenue sharing increase of $28 million for cities, townships, villages, and about, I think, $3.5 million for counties. I kind of wondered, um, you know, what what your sense is of that. Is that adequate? Uh, do you have any comment to that? I think you'll have to come up here. Oh, oh, no? okay. Can you hear me out there? Okay, great. Uh, revenue sharing, I believe, represents about 26% or so of our revenue stream. Property taxes are uh, the major source at about 50%. <clears throat> the uh, Last year was the first year that we actually um, experienced an increase. Uh, in previous years, there's well over a billion dollars in uh, revenue sharing that was shorted township, cities, and counties. Um, it is very important. Uh, revenue sharing was established as part of the 1967 Income Tax Act uh, as a way to reimburse uh, local governments for taxes that uh, were not were eliminated back at that time. and. Uh, it, it looks like we're going to have an increase again, although uh, some of the numbers coming out of the uh, Department of Management and Budget uh, for not only this year but future years, um, uh, the state is, um, they just did a, an executive order of about $105 million because uh, more single business tax credits were being uh, submitted than what were expected and they uh, assume that's going to continue. Um, the good news about revenue sharing, at least for cities and townships, is that a portion of it is constitutionally guaranteed. Uh, a portion of the sales tax under the law must uh, go to the cities and townships. Uh, counties, on the other hand, we um, it is not mandated, but I think there's enough former local official, officials in uh, Lansing that uh, they understand the importance of it. <coughs> Yeah, as far as the city goes, obviously the, the more revenue sharing that's that's given to, in this case, us in, in Bay City, uh, the less we have to depend on other 
source of revenue, which right now are very flat. I mean, our property taxes actually decreased significantly uh, with the uh, decrease in the home values, and that has continued for a number of years. This current fiscal year and what's being projected for next year, we're basically bottoming out. We will stay pretty much the same this year as we will for next year also, and then we anticipated starting to slowly climb up. So that means that we're going to be very, very revenue neutral for those big uh, normal resources that we would depend on. So the more that the state can make up, I think the better. And I think if we look at what's been done in the past, Tom's absolutely right. There's been a tremendous amount of money that was not shared with the counties and the cities and the townships uh, during that, again, Great Recession. And that has affected everything uh, that we do uh, up to this very day. So the more that the state can do that, and there's also been some studies that indicate, unfortunately, uh, we can debate this later on, uh, but a lot of the savings that were taken from the, the cities and the counties by giving less and less shared revenue over the years went into state government. So the state government was, as we became smaller and smaller because of less dollars, the state government actually grew. And I think if you take a look at that, that's rather interesting. Thank you. And I believe we have a question from Mr. Gerard. Yes, thank you, Chris Gerard. My quick question, it was kind of stark, the, the, how short order the decline in student population. When uh, superintendents get together, do you talk about projections and, and, and where you're heading? Do you continue to see this decline? And, and what uh, do you think we all need to do to address that? Well, we do. We address it quite a bit. And uh, another collaboration piece that, that I could have noted was um, we do a, a study. It's through our middle cities. It's, a, it's an organization that actually looks at population trends, birth rates, uh, job growth forecasts. And um, unfortunately, it looks, to, looks like it's going to be a continued downward trend. Uh, not, not, a, not as stark as it was five years ago, but you know, we've looked at our programs. We've, we've had to adjust. And again, we just got it. We just got the numbers back from the most recent um, enrollment projections, and they're down. But again, they're not down uh, as quite as bad as they looked five years ago. Another question? Uh, thank you. I think this is probably primarily for Tom, but maybe Rick as well. Yeah. We have the upcoming vote uh, to increase the sales tax. Is that going to benefit the local roads, city and county roads, or is that primarily for the state roads? Uh, the, under the uh, Transportation Act, uh, a portion of the revenue will be allocated to uh, cities uh, and road commissions, and a portion of it will go into uh, supporting uh, state trunk lines and expressway work. So there, there definitely is uh, a benefit there. I frankly think that the um, legislature in the last session botched the whole matter uh, by putting it on the ballot and um, I'm supporting the measure because you know of all the things that we've got wrong in this uh, state the road system is um, shameful and um, all you have to we first time ever went down to Florida last week Nancy and I and talk about good roads now they don't have winners um, but they obviously uh, are maintaining their roads a whole lot better and you know, all you have to do is go to Ohio Indiana, you see the same thing. Yeah, I, I share what uh, Tom just indicated. I think that uh, from the city standpoint, uh, we're very desperate for some additional monies to improve our roads. Uh, I, I've been told that we can't say that we, we want to publicly support this election or not because of our positions, but in any event, the important thing is that somehow, whether it's this upcoming election or something else, or the legislature just goes back and, and does their job, quite honestly, and, and determines how this should be done, uh, the cities, the counties, the townships, uh, we all need more money in order to take care of our roads and bridges, and we are uh, in desperate shape on that. We, we, we do the best we can, but it's, it's really limited by the amount of dollars that we have, so. Question over there. <laughs> On my road, we have a city truck that comes out and runs 
align with your solutions and you open it up so they can go through. Is this on the forefront of anybody's mind in the city or county to fix our sewer system? Uh, get flooded and we've made a commitment to them that we're going to try to track down exactly what's causing that. We think that there's a connection between the storm sewer and, and the sanitary sewer that when we have large amounts of rainfall, it backs up into their basement. So we have promised them and the, and the neighborhood out there that we will identify where that is being caused by. And in order to do that, those trucks that you see, there's one truck in particular that uh, we, we put a line through it and it televises everything so it can tell us exactly where the problem is. So that's what's going on out there. Who else has questions? Anyone? Well, I guess I have a, another question. Um, this one is, is from Mike. Uh, you had mentioned that there has been an awful lot of legislation that's been introduced uh, in terms of education. Uh, and there was some legislation recently introduced that I found kind of interesting. Uh, it was introduced in the House, and it's to increase the allowable snow days from six to nine per year, and then also allow the district's flexibility in making up those snow days. Um, I just kind of wondered how uh, we are at the local level in terms of how many snow days have we had? Are we reaching, are we getting close to the six days? And are, is this something that would be um, favorable to the districts locally here? Uh, locally, it, we're anywhere between, I think we have two at Penn County and I think there's four in Bay City in, in Essexville. Um, I think we would be welcome to any type of um, relief, uh, but you know, local control, letting us decide how we want to make up that time, because it is, you know, it's it's either adding minutes or days, and then we, we're, we're pushed into a corner where we have, you know, we have the um, we have summer schedules that we have, have to adhere to. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think in, in the past that hasn't gone over well with our uh, legislator. The relief just hasn't been there, and my opinion is we'll just have to make up the days. Thank you. Anybody else? Last call for questions. This is your opportunity. Ask what's on your mind. Uh, I, I do want to make some summary comments uh, before we uh, leave. And uh, somebody asked me what the, since this is the state of the uh, community, what this, my, the state of my mind is. And right now it's a little confused, but I do want to thank all of you who have reached out to, to support this interim ship at the Chamber. Uh, I want to give you a real quick update on the state of the Bay Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, our chamber. Um, I, I assess in the last couple of weeks that uh, it's very good. Uh, financially, we're sound. Uh, we've got very strong volunteers. We've got excellent committees. I've been fortunate to sit on a few committees most recently, and I'm really enthused about the participation and the direction that uh, our community is taking, uh, our community volunteers are taking the chamber and all of the things that all of you folks are involved in. Um, our, the, the state of the chamber also includes a wonderful staff. Uh, the details behind the scene is absolutely amazing and I can't give enough credit to the ladies in the office to, made Mike look good in, in this short period are making me look good, so thank them. Uh, during this interim period, uh, we don't know how long this is going to be, but if anybody ever makes a comment about me not wearing a tie, it could be very short. <laughs> I want to ask Herb Spence, did you have one of those plasma cutters when you went in high school? Uh, where, where are we going this little period? We're trying to assess all of the programs and services. Uh, I think it's good, as I mentioned to some people, uh, we're flexing a little bit, trying to see where we're at, where we're going. Uh, Mike left a, a strong legacy, but you know it's time to reevaluate every organization periodically. So uh, we're looking to drive the chamber to be more quality driven than quantity. Uh, we, we're not looking at just adding numbers, but making sure that there's value to you as members. Um, we want to 
be able to assist you better use the chamber so we need some input and we're going to be assessing that over the next few weeks and maybe month a couple months of at the most we need feedback what's working for you with regard to your benefits and sponsorships what's not are the things that we should be doing differently so this is your chance to better the chamber for your benefit one thing we need right now and you can inform staff on your way out or email or call is what kind of speakers and what kind of topics do you want at like the eye opener breakfast and lunches like this forums and summits that we're involved in we need your input to make sure that's meeting your needs and I want to take this opportunity to thank Josh Sherrill. Josh with uh, Last Country Radio should be your first choice for radio listening and streaming. But he's behind the scenes doing the uh, sound and that, and we really appreciate his, his assistance. If you need him, hit him up on the way out and get one of his cards. Now, uh, I guess that, that's the last thing. Did anybody think of a question for these guys? I can't believe this. Okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mike and uh, Tom and Rick again. It's been a pleasure meeting with them and, and Mike most recently and uh, Rick as well and Tom. The state of our community is very strong. It can only get stronger with your participation and assistance. So uh, with that, I want to thank everybody. I want to uh, wish you all a safe drive back to work or home or wherever you're, you're going from here. Thanks so much. Uh, Pat O'Brien, thanks for uh, heading this up in uh, a little of uh, album like today. And Mike Stolak, we appreciate your assistance. Thanks, everybody. Have a safe trip home.